Okay, I just wanted to take a look at two more scenarios that um, lead to Hamiltonian systems. One is an unbamped harmonic oscillator. I'm going to take a look at that in a moment because we've looked at that pretty thoroughly already, but not in this particular context. The other is an ideal pendulum. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the setup for that. Okay. So basically, we've got a pendulum that's attached to a wall somewhere here. There's a rod of length L with a mass at the end of that. And it's swinging back and forth. And we set up our system so that theta is the angle that we make with this downward axis measured in this direction. So this theta would be a small positive angle. The understanding is that this uh, pendulum is free to rotate all the way around if it wants to. So it could go back and forth, or if it gets enough momentum going, it could go all the way around and keep spinning and spinning and spinning like so. Okay. This is called an ideal pendulum because it's the pendulum we would get if there are no damping forces. So if there's no friction, no air resistance. Okay. So it's kind of a nice system, and I can pretty easily see that it's going to be Hamiltonian because here theta is my variable and v is my second variable. If I take the partial of this with respect to theta, I get zero because there are no thetas in it. And if I take the partial of this with respect to v, I also get zero because there are no v's in it. Okay. So this is Hamiltonian. Turns out when we find the Hamiltonian function for this, it's another one where not super sure what the um, um, level curves of that would look like, but that is drawn in your textbook, and there's a very nice discussion of what that looks like. So I just wanted to point this out. There are going to be several questions in the homework that do ask you about the pendulum. I'm not concerned that you know how to derive this. Those of you who have studied physics might be interested in reading through the derivation of getting here. They start with a pendulum that actually does have some damping forces, and then they just zero those out to get this ideal pendulum. But you should be familiar with the system and able to answer some questions about it as you'll be asked to do in the homework. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at our undamped harmonic oscillator. Okay. So if y is my position, okay, then I know that um, y prime would be my velocity and y double prime would be my acceleration. velocity and acceleration. Okay. And if it's an undamped harmonic oscillator, then the total force that's acting on it is nothing but the restoring force that we get from Hooke's law. Oh, an opportunity to draw loose. So here we have our mass, and here we have the infamous massless mouse moose who is going for a ride on this undamped harmonic oscillator and smiling in the process. Okay, excellent. So the total force by Newton's law is just mass times acceleration and the restoring force by Hooke's law is just negative the spring constant times y. Remember, if y is in a positive position, the restoring force will be acting in the negative direction because it's trying to restore us to a rest position. Okay. So, if I then form the corresponding system, okay, we let y prime equal v, okay, and then I know that y double prime is just v prime. So if I solve for this, v prime is y double prime, which is just negative k over m times y. Okay. We usually will just give this thing a name. Um, so let's call that, what do we usually call it? Is it P or Q? I think it's Q. <laughs> so V prime is negative Q times Y. Okay. Where Q is a positive parameter, it's the spring constant divided by the mass. Okay, excellent. So let's confirm that this is Hamiltonian and find our Hamiltonian function. Okay. So I'm saying this is my f of 
YV, and this is G of YV, so I'm using different names for my variables. To check to see whether it's Hamiltonian, I'm taking the partial of F with respect to X. <laughs> Remember, I'm hoping if it's Hamiltonian that this whole thing is zero. The partial of my Hamiltonian function, if it exists, with respect to X times DX by DT, plus the partial of my Hamiltonian with respect to Y times DY by DT, and a way that could be zero is if this is the partial of H with respect to Y, and this is the opposite of the partial of H with respect to X. So, if that's the case, this would already, oh, I'm sorry, not X. <laughs> I want Y because that's my first variable here, okay? So, if this is the case, this is already the partial of H with respect to V, so taking the partial with respect to Y would give me a mixed partial. So that's just going to be zero because there are no Y's here. Then if I take the partial of G with respect to V, I'm also going to get zero because there are no V's here. And so I do have that the partial of F with respect to Y is the opposite of the partial of F, sorry, the partial of G with respect to V. So this is, in fact, Hamiltonian. <laughs> So let me just write it down again up here. So I've got y prime equals v, and I now know that that's the partial of h with respect to v, and v prime is negative q times y, and I know that's the opposite of the partial of h with respect to y. <laughs> so if I want to find my Hamiltonian function, I can certainly do that. So I'm going to say h is the integral of the partial of h with respect to v, integrating that with respect to v. So that's going to be the integral of v dv, which is just v squared over 2 plus k of y, plus an arbitrary constant. Uh, with respect to v. Partial of h with respect to y will be 0 plus k prime of y, but I know that's the opposite of this, so that's just q times y, the opposite of negative q times y. So k of y will be the integral of k prime of y dy, which is the integral of qy dy, which is going to be qy squared over 2 plus c, where c is an honest-to-goodness constant, and I'm allowed to choose c equals 0 because I just want a Hamiltonian function. So now I can put the pieces together, and I'm going to get that h is equal to v squared over 2 plus qy squared over 2. So that's my Hamiltonian function. My level curves for that, v squared over 2 plus qy squared over 2 equals some constant, those are ellipses. If q happens to be 1, those are going to be circles. If q isn't 1, those are ellipses. And that's exactly what we know we're supposed to get for our phase portrait. I know that the equilibrium solution at the origin would be a center, and basically, moose the massless mouse is just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and the velocity is oscillating and the position is oscillating. Now, I'd have to look at the individual system. I'd have to look at what the value of Q was and things to um, find out and what my initial, con well, do I need the initial condition? Let's see. Can I figure out, I think I can actually figure out from this which way we're, we're rotating because I could write this as Y prime V prime equals 0, 1, negative Q, 0. If I multiply that by 1, 0, 
if I call that matrix A, A times 1, 0 is just 0, negative Q. <laughs> so when I'm at position 1, 0, I'm not going left or right, but I am going down. We're rotating this way. Nice. <laughs> So I can actually figure that out. Now the exact size and shape of the ellipse would depend on what K and what Q are. So those would vary. But kind of nice to see that, yep, this confirms that when we have an undamped harmonic oscillator, the equilibrium solution at the origin is a center.